Okay, I think we're recording now. I'll check that in just a moment. But welcome everyone. It's June 22nd. And um, I'm glad you all could join me for the classroom meeting for ED600. Welcome again. Um, we're starting our sixth week. So a lot of uh, time spent um, since we began. I mean, a month and a half of work on this has uh, really amounted to quite a quite a lot of progress. And, you know, we really had a chance to <clears throat> think deeply about um, writing your review. And that's where I'm trying to steer everybody right now. And that's what we want to spend our time today looking at. So I wanted to just begin by um, showing you on Blackboard if you wanted to take a look. So in this um, Zoom resources, I'll post it again. Um, I'll try to put them into the final review folder, but I just put them in today in with the Zoom recordings just so that they're close. But there's the two reviews, the, um, the essay and the matrix. So I'll open those and we'll take a look at those later, but I just want to show you where they were. Um, and as I uh, mentioned earlier, the, um, the idea today is to <clears throat> talk a little bit more quant about quantitative research and get, um, then get a, an idea, a good idea, clear as idea as possible about um, working on the comparison matrix, which is a step in the process of writing a review. And I want to um, congratulate all of you on making it through that step um, and submitting your um, draft matrix on Blackboard. I had a chance to look at those. Did, if, did everyone get a chance to take a look at the feedback from your work on the matrix? Great. Um, uh, it was it, it the the, um, the work in in all its forms. I mean, some of you were in different stages of filling that out, but today I really wanted to try to walk th through and show again um, what all of the you know entirely filled out matrix uh, looks like, uh, and also then start to use it because it's not just a matter of done and check the box. But I really want to use this as a graphic organizer to help shape your thinking for your final review and the, the thing which we're going to do next Monday, have a research, uh, a, 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 a number of forums, small forums. I think we'll have four small group forums um, where you're gonna be doing what I'm calling a research conversation or a student led research conversation uh, with each other. Um, and you'll be doing that, um, of course, based on the, the topic that you have, but um, you'll also be, I would, I would suggest that what you do is um, pick out two articles that you would like to talk about with your, with your group. Um, I've worked with this idea of selecting, you know, we've selected from all the articles you found, we've selected six, and now when I'm, when you're kind of approaching or, or, or getting ready to do a presentation, oftentimes you think, how am I gonna do everything in a little bit of time? So what better strategy to do is do less, make your points with less th than trying to cover everything. So this would this is the the next step. So we'll we'll talk more in more detail about what that is. But what that is 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 a yet another step in the writing what I consider the writing process, and that's to have you thinking about your um, paper or your topic, and then thinking how am I going to speak about this to a to a group? What am I going to say? How will I um, describe? How will I go analyze um, and um, maybe answer questions or, or seek feedback from the group? You know, when you think about your topic. So next Monday will be um, probably in two parts. We'll have a general time for us to talk and a general time for us to um, you know, again, go over what the final review is and, and answer at any questions. Um, but at least an hour of the time will be spent in small groups. So I'll put you into the breakout rooms and have you talking with each other about your topic using two articles. So think about that for a minute, using selecting two, of, two out of the six articles that you have. 
Now, with, with that in mind, um, what we want to do today is talk, as I said, a little bit more about non-experimental research, um, answer questions you might have about um, all of the things that are that that are kind of coming together in the the quantitative research, uh, and then also talk about uh, the final review, the matrix, this research conversation, and the write up in your final review, <clears throat> kind of how we're going to finish the course. So let me just stop there, as as I always like to do. I'd like to make sure that I give you all a chance to. Um, Ask any question, ask questions, um, point things out that are on your mind, or um, maybe some gaps, things that I've, you know, said or forgotten to fill in. Uh, all of my and things that I'm expecting clarify expectations. So let let me just ask you all for just a moment if you have it, or you know, any kind of questions that you have that we could deal with, um, and I might talk about in the next hour. Jeff, I have a question. What's due this week? I thought last week you said we would not be doing a separate quantitative evaluation, but it looked online like we were. Well, I, I know it, we're not. We're, we're going to do, well, it, it's, what, I'm, what I did was shift the assignment for the experimental critique from an individually written assignment to a group um, dis, uh, discussion on Blackboard. So, all of the and so in making that assignment, I also then went through each group and and gave you all a starting point for the discussion. So I've already put people into different starting points, you know, theory, design, sampling, measurement, where whatever um, you know came up. I I placed people into those different starting points, and it worked out that we have a we have the right number of people, you know, the exact number of people to. Uh, make to even out the groups at five each. So is everyone okay? Does everyone understand that? We're not doing an individual critique. We're working in the um, online discussion forum for that. So, um, so we're not giving you a written thing. It's only the online discussion. That's right. Right. Because right. yeah, it still says on your uh, module that will be turning something in. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm countermanding my orders, okay? <laughs> as clearly as possible. Um, and I um, will, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and, and um, edit that out. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm sticking with it. I haven't forgotten. Yeah, Molly? Um, I'm, I guess I'm still slow to kind of figure out this, uh, I think I have the data analysis section in our article. I'm, I'm not as clear on how to read the statistics. Um, I think I can get percentages and things like that, mean, all of that. But it, you said to mention it was T score, T, F scores with P values. And in our, I kind of need it spelled out and there's no like, this is a P value, this is this. So I'm still confused on those scores. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can open up a couple of the, the articles and just point out what what might be the um, a lot of numbers. I know. That. Well, there are a lot. Of, yeah, there are a lot of numbers. And so one of the things to remember um, that I'm also saying and, and uh, think is worth um, uh, you understanding is that the way an article is written, the most important statistics, the most important analysis is going to be the first analysis, okay? Writers, when you, when you present a study, the first thing you do is address the most important or the primary question at the beginning. So if you want, and then after that, there's a lot, and that's one of the things that may lead to some confusion. There's a, there may be one thing after the other after the other, and those are all qualifiers and um, kind of sub questions and, quite possibly diagnostic kinds of statistics and uh, things which are, um, they, they're, they're not on the same level as that first statement. And 
the, the, if you read the text, the text will say, this is, the, this is where we start. This is the main effect, or this is the first question. And that, if you go back and look at the purpose of the article, that'll match very clearly with the most important point of the article. Okay, so you have to trust the text and how that text is ordered. It's not sequenced from, you know, small to large. It's sequenced from most important to secondary to, you know, tertiary, you know, things which are supporting questions. And so read your article like that. So the, that's one thing. So read so that you look at that first statistic. And we'll take a look at that. And we'll, let me just give you a chance to see that with the article. The second thing is, you can't report on everything. That is, you can't say everything back to any audience about a, a study. Can't do it. You would, it would, it, to repeat it would be to just say, oh, go read the thing. So what you need to do is to, to take the, 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 the approach of, I'm going to summarize this. So if there are a lot of statistics, you could say, well, geez, there's four or five different research questions, but I'm going to talk about the first two. And that's what summary writing and that's what summary thinking is. And that's what gets us into trouble quite often is we want to do everything for everything, everybody all the time or everything for every point all the time. And that's not what summary writing is. And so it's, there's a balancing act because I know some of you are thinking, oh, I don't know these statistics and I, am, I feel a little afraid that I'm not reporting them correctly. And I can't, I can't undo the fact that, and I can't really teach all the stuff that goes with it. But what I can say is that you're reading them with better understanding than you did before. I'm sure of that. Um, and what I want you to, you know, understand and have confidence in is that there's always a, a central question that is being asked in a study. And that's what's important. And what, what um, people like, Unfortunately, you know, I've been a research designer. You end up saying, boy, I can ask another one and another one and another one, and you end up complicating things. And so we get kind of our own worst enemies because we can do it. Maybe we shouldn't. So that's, that's something to, to be aware of. Um, and, you know, I, I applaud you. If you're interested in statistics and have gone on to look at more of the statistical reasoning, good for you. And, and if you're interested, ask me, ask me more point out what you what you want to know and so let's we'll walk through some of these we should walk through those studies just so you can see those um, and I can help you kind of do sort out the weeds a little bit from the important things uh, that would be great study. I think the number reportings are there like a, a whole line long of all these different numbers that are attached mm -hmm. together so that would be awesome it, it's, it, it, and you know, it's, I think sometimes we get carried, you know, statisticians and research researchers get um, carried away by over reporting. Not that we're trying to do a snow job, but people want to be accurate. And this is one of those things that, you know, scientific method is, is thorough, it's exhausting in that you want to put all that detail out there. So what can you do? I mean, you really want to put it out there in a study. If you're going to write a summary of the study, then that all goes away. Then it's what's the key idea? What's, what's the most important thing? So I'll, I'll, I'll pull up those articles and walk through them really quickly in, in just a minute. Are there, how about other questions, more questions that you might have? Molly says, no. Taylor says, no, Taylor's not giving, Taylor, no, no questions. I do, are we doing, um, are we breaking into sessions or into groups on here and critique or talking about the article that we read or we're just doing that on Blackboard in discussion? Well, uh, you know what, I, you know what I think it would be good to do is I think you should break out here in the, in this uh, and have a chance to talk about your article. But what I'll, so what I'll do also, um, and what I could do for each each group then is walk you through that a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'd like to. How about the matrix? How are people doing on the matrix? I know they're, you know, so I'll walk through that. That's the example I put up here. I wanted to walk you through that. So far, so good. The things that I'm looking for in the matrix again is to for you to summarize in those what I, I'm now calling information boxes in those cells um, and 
just one of the things that I noticed is just make sure that the criteria you use for quantitative are quantitative theory sampling and uh, measurement and qualitative transferability, dependability, and um, credibility. So just make sure that those are sorted out. Um, and you know, there are other little details that we'll talk about, but I think um, overall people had a pretty good sense of how you were analyzing the articles. I know some are, are working across the matrix, some are working down, some are working down and across. So um, I think that, I hope the feedback helped there. So I tell you what, let me, um, let me sort you into groups and have you talk about, have, have us talk about that. Or I tell you what, let, let's, let's talk about the matrix first, then let's take a break and I'll, I'll sort you into groups. We'll take a, and then come back. So let me just open this example I just put in there in the um, Blackboard. So if you go to Blackboard, what I did was to open, again, in the Zoom bibliography, a Zoom bibliography and resources, there's a folder that says Zoom recording and handouts, and I put that there. So let's take a look at that one as, a, as an exemplar of a review and the matrix. I need to stop screen and reshare here. So here's the reshare. Okay, so I've opened up the matrix and I'm gonna share that with you now. So this is Brittany Chapman's review of the effects of music education, of music on um, learning. Uh, let me just show you the title of the essay so I have that right. The effects of music on English language learners language and literacy acquisition. So her title, she's looking at music and using music as a way to enhance the uh, achievement of um, what I would say multi-language multi learners. And her there's her essay. So we'll come back to the essay. Well, let's start though with the matrix. So there's the matrix for her, for her study. And as I've said, tried to, to give you say and to give feedback is that the rows are the studies. Uh, in this case, you can, t you can see that um, Brittany took quite a, quite a bit of, of her effort, expended quite a bit of her discussion on the quali overall quality of the studies. And for each one of the reasons that the, she rated or each one of the ratings, she provided a brief reason. And so this, that uh, is a very uh, fully developed um, section of that matrix. Um, to get back over here to the beginning where it starts the, with the title research question, it could be that you're only writing one of the research questions. You could say there's multiple research questions, but again, it's, Kind of how you build it. I, I don't want you to overwrite into the matrix. Again, it's a, 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 a kind of a design challenge, really, to, to do uh, summary thinking. And so in this case, the research design is a ethnographic study. It's, it was called by the author an autoethnographic study, uh, which I think um, uh, was a teacher, a, a one teacher who did an ethnography of her of student of his students, um, and going across this, this all looks very good. One of the things that I'm sure I mentioned as feedback 
to Brittany along the way, although she didn't really uh, take me up on my feedback, was going from data analysis to actually telling me some of the themes that she that were presented by the author in the article. So again, it's not everything. It's what are what's one main point that was made by the uh, the author. So putting that in the data analysis and results. Right. So the data analysis and results is is those are those two things: the analysis and um, a summary of the results. In this case, so we're going same same um, matrix, second article. Um, you can see the sampling is similar. I always like I want to have you. Um, include information about the number in, a, in a, the sample size, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. Uh, and to you know, for qualitative, um, the you know listen or read what the author says, and you kind of have to take what the author says in your um, as as your description of the sample. I mean, quite most most qualitative studies are done with a sample that matches the question of fifth graders or seventh graders or teachers, uh, special ed teachers, or I mean, there there's a specific sample they're going for. So that's a purposeful or purposive sample. Um, it might be a, a different one, but then I would just make sure that what that's what the author says and the data sources are there. So you can tell a case study has multiple data sources, visual methodology for analyzing data. Again, what were some of the themes would be the question I would have. And there's, you see the ratings for quality include a small uh, reason for, for the rating. In this case, it was trustworthy was high, trustworthiness was high because of triangulation and checks for accuracy. Um, a good, good thing to think about in rating these articles is uh, try to be, um, Try, try to think of being fair, um, but also being uh, as accurate as you can be, because you don't want to rate everything as high quality. You, I mean, you do want to create uh, a sense of what those scales mean. And I give, believe me, I give research people, you know, all the credit in the world, but, and you could have a, a great idea and, and it could suffer from um, a bad sample. Or you know, like something could have happened in a study. It's it happened, you know, when I had a, a study I was doing. The sample had a uh, a shift in it. There were so it, and it wasn't anything that I planned for, but you know, it's something that weakened the quality of the article. Um, and having those articles rated actually gives you a way to then look at the articles and say, so which ones were really the best ones, and which ones were not didn't quite. Um, meet the criteria and which ones really um, have a lot to uh, that they need to do in order to improve. And that rating is important when you get to your final review because then you have a sense of what are my best studies? What are my two to three best studies? What are my studies that aren't quite so good? And you can use that as a way of then going through and talking about your best studies and contrasting them with other studies or just using these are my best studies or these are my, this is a contrasting discussion. This is a study that was rated highly. This was not rated, this was rated less and, and the reasons why. So the ratings will now come into really uh, to have an important role as you think about how you're going to write about your studies and write about them in a way that synthesizes the information and really and doesn't just list one study after the other because you've already done that here. You've already listed one study after the other in this format. So in this case, that when we get to Article 3, we have a quantitative study and you can see that that shifts very radically in terms of what we talk about, what's, what's listed here. The sample size, the, the groups, the size of groups is important. The, over the, this is the measurement column right here. And it's important to note what are the, in, in, what variables are used 
how they're used, how they're measured. Um, in this column, um, if you have data, um, or if you have measurement, or you have tests, standardized tests or other tests, is there any reliability and validity in, uh, and validity information that's presented? And this is where you would do reliability is, and then put a indicate what that is. And in this case, the um, in the data analysis column. This has been sorted out into research questions. So we've got kind of detailed here. You could, probably could have done just one, but in this case, the statistics that you know are are worth entering a T score or an F score. I mean, we can only see the first, or I can only see the first one on my computer. Is there any way you can scroll down to the quantitative what you're talking about? You, it, it, this hasn't scrolled down. I have. Has it scrolled down for other people? I'll stop and restart. Sorry. All right. I actually no, just looked screens enough. and I pulled it up myself. So can you? So are you? Are you seeing the study number three now? Yes. So study number three, Greenfielder, Brule, and, and Farkas. Yeah. Oh, there we go, that's a mouthful. Uh, in this case, this happens to be a correlational study. And the, the correlations, these are correlations that um, I'm sure I spent time talking back and forth with, with Audrey about these um, and the p-values. And she just went ahead and entered quite a few of them. Not that you, not that again, you can just enter one that first research question uh, is the one that is probably the most important. Um, but so, could, yeah, go so, ahead. So, if this is um, a coral, um, you know correlational study, why didn't it say that in you know under quantitative? I mean, so what she said, Article Three. So what I'm looking at here is um, her match of beta weights the so the correlations have been used to, to uh, in a way to correlate the effects of the treatment so this is a like a special this is more of an unusual um example of a of the way an experimental treatment and, and a group experimental study design would be uh reported um So you don't need, she didn't need to say that it was, state that it was. Um, well, that it was correlational. Yeah. Do perform better than oral. Well, it was, it was listed as a, correl a correlational study. It had treatment group and I mean, it was listed as experimental study. Right. And the most experiments are analyzed with T tests and F and analysis of variance correlations can be used and they're not used as often for experimental studies. So, I, and so this is a, a, a different, a, maybe a, a little bit more unusual in terms of its uh, application of the statistical reasoning. And so, this is a uh, this fourth study is a a group comparison, so that's a non-experimental design in which they're doing a comparison of musical preferences, and again using F scores and T scores ratings, but um, then other statistics to look at differences between, I believe this one was done with English language learners um, to see their music preferences. So I don't know whether they did it from with English language learners. So it's Chinese, 20, 34 males and 28 females. And so they're uh, looking at their preferences uh, according to a, to a survey they did. Again, this is this helps me get to the skeleton of the article and get the essential ideas. Um, it's not going to be a complete um, description of the article. Um, I I'd say that 
the review, we'll take a look at the review in just a moment, but I thought it'd be just good to, to take a look at this one and kind of, you know, look, poke, you know, look into it a little bit more deeply. Again, the quantitative ex experimental design, this one has T tests, which is more expected from a experimental study that you'd be comparing a treatment group and a control group. And again, uh, uh, this is, this is a, um, I would say, has a little bit more reporting than, than is necessary. Um, it looks like, um, I, I think that this also um, is one of those, is a study, is a, it might be, I have to take a look at the specific study to, to see whether or not the um, similar kinds of correlational research was done there. What you'll find is some, some studies will do both uh, the experimental comparison and correlations in the same study. That is, they look at what are the differences and they also look at what are the trends and patterns of the association between variables. So again, that's one of those, uh, uh, I think, situations that the researchers are trying to get as much out of the data as they possibly can. But the primary question, the most important question would be the leading question, the first question that they ask and the first analysis that, that they do. And what I try to do, um, and what I encourage you to do is to, to um, put enough in here that you can show me that you know what is being analyzed, but don't try to, you don't need to put everything in there. I think this might be a case where um, there's so much in here, but it's, it's not really necessary. But what you see here, she is adding some of these idea of the reliability estimates for the measurement. Um, I, I think the other thing that, uh, that is good to see here is identifying what the independent variable is and what is the dependent variable. In this case, teachers who are receiving professional development and dependent variable use of singing and voice, the singing voice in their um, audiation achievement or vocal achievement is from what I can tell. But I would say that most of you in your comparison matrix already had those, had that level of analysis and had those kinds of details included. I think it's just good to take a look and see what, again, another exemplar looks like. Um, let me just quickly do this. Um, go back there and we can walk through the, the study itself. So the study begins with the introduction. Of course, the, there's a running header, a page number on the right. Uh, there are section heads, introduction. And in this case, you can see that the author is using that first person, which is a good way to introduce what you're doing. Hey, Jeff. Yeah? I'm not seeing the essay yet. So that, that me flipping to that essay didn't work. OK, let me just get it back then. I thought I thought we were on the same. It allowed me to jump to that, so you should see it now. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Sorry about. Thanks for thanks for mentioning it. So there there it is. So you can take a look at it. What I think is important is to see that the sections are divided with the same research categories, which you've seen before. You can see how the sections are introduced and organized again, with an organizing statement or organizing paragraph, and then summary article, summary statements about those articles. And we progress through the whole review with, the with, with again, those similar research categories. Trying to keep this 
consistent so that you can not uh, so that you can use those to think about what your writing is and how you're pulling this together. Um, one last thing. Let's go back. I just want to go back to the to the um, to the matrix. Okay, when you're thinking about your, so your presentation next week, to the re leading a research conversation, you're gonna pick out two articles and you can use your, I would suggest that you use your matrix to organize your, your um, conversation and just, you know, tell us, tell, tell uh, your, uh, the people in your group, here's article, my, my, and then here's article number one, here's article number two, and just walk through them. And then kind of give an overall, you know, uh, summary of what you, what you found. So let me just, let me ask you then, if you are going to pick out two articles, how might you do that? Think about your stuff. What would, how would you pick out two articles? I kind of had uh, two different things come up in my studies. One was more of a strategy and one was more of um, grouping in classes. So I might pick one for the strategy. Um, mine was about trying to help with different abilities in your class and how to uh, construct a class where you're more effective as a teacher. So one couple of the studies were about specific strategies that might help and a couple and three of actually three of them were about strategies and three of them are about mixed ability versus same ability how you group and so maybe I would take one of each. So if you're going to pick two you might pick you might use the, your conceptual thinking about how I pick those and are those your favorite articles are they the best articles or not sure what's my favorite yet. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of time together, but I'm what are some other ideas? What are some other ideas? How would you go about thinking? How do you pick out two articles? I would probably pick one qualitative and one quantitative. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Good idea. I like see Kelly's giving you the thumbs up too for doing that. I think that's also a way to, you know, balance out a presentation and uh, gives you a chance to talk about both of them. Again, the, the conversation you have, the way we talk about these is different. Uh, and is really a way to think about this um, as you think about how you're going to write about this. So again, use this as a time to think and articulate some of your ideas that again, you're, you're going to use and write about later. And so also you might think of it as a way to, if you have two articles and you're talking about them and you have questions about them, you might say to the group, and I have some questions, can you help me figure this out? Um, and as you use your matrix, share your matrix. I think everyone can share their screens, but I would use your matrix as your guide as you walk through so that we can all benefit by seeing each other's work on the matrix. Uh, there's so many great ideas to share um, and so many interesting ways to uh, summarize information. So what are some other, so we've, we've got con concepts to organize them. We can do a qualitative and a quantitative. What are some other ways to do our, your picking of two articles? Maybe one that you rated higher for quality and the one that you rated lower. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea, Erin. That is, what, what's the best and what's the worst? That's contrasting these ideas from best to worst. And now you have a tool that you've used. So you're clearly saying this one is strong. This one is not so strong. It might, you know, it even me, might be an article that you found, you started out really thinking was going to be a great article. And then you realized as you went through the criteria, wow, this one really didn't have quite what I thought it would, but it's still, I'm including it because it's, it's on the topic that I want. So I think that strong and weak is a great way to do that. Um, what's, what's another way to do it? Maybe if the results are different or like um, way off from each other. 
yeah, if you have really kind of, kind of that, um, if it seems like you have outliers, right? If something doesn't yeah. fit. So you're, yeah. so what you're trying to do is find, figure out, do these things fit together? And if something doesn't fit, then you might say this one really doesn't fit. And that happens. That does happen. I mean, for, for one reason or another, I mean, sometimes we have unusually high effects in one study and not such a, much high or high impact in another. Okay, so there's a number of different ways of thinking about how you go about and pick those two. And as you're, since we've gone through them, we've gone through a conceptual way of doing it, that, you know, something that helps inform your practice. We've gone through qualitative and quantitative, the best and the worst, things that fit and don't fit. So think of those different approaches as you're thinking about writing about these as well. Those are some ways of approaching your writing as you're writing your review, as you're writing those, diff those sections on sampling, on measurement, on um, the results and analysis, analysis and results that you can use to help you shape the way you're writing your review. It's, it's, a, it's a strong way of presenting information when you have uh, a, 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 a thought a, a, a framework, if you will, to do that writing. And so that's the, a similar kind of thing. Now, I'm not saying just write about two articles. If you write about three, you can summarize across them, but you can use that as a way to um, do the, um, write your review and, and you incorporate these different features and different kinds of things that you've worked very hard on in that analysis. And this is why I'm trying to say the comparison matrix is a tool. Now, not only for your presentation or your thinking, but for your writing. Okay. Um, you know, you might look at that matrix as, as a way and, you know, circle which ones are the best down each one of the categories. You know, use that kind of physical uh, way of marking what your matrix is. Use a color or something like that to indicate which, which cells are the strongest, which are the weakest. How does it look when you... Uh, look at you know, from that, and I'm looking down those categories. When we're writing each section, we're looking at the sampling across studies, analysis across studies. Okay, well, let's take let's take. So if we take a break now, and I get you and organize you into groups. I'm, I don't, I know we don't have everyone here from the group, so it looks like we have eight, thirteen, fourteen. We don't, ha we were kind of, you know, it's going to be some groups are going to be a little larger than others, but I can walk you through there nonetheless. And um, we can talk a little bit more about the studies uh, and prepare you for your critique. Okay. So why don't you give me a few minutes and let's see, just before you, before you go, let me just make sure I have everyone so I can sort you into your, into your groups. Don't leave me yet. Anything else? Is there any other things that are on your mind as far as what we're, what we're doing, where we're going? Is the, um, is the final um, essay due uh, the Sunday after next Monday? Justine, um, let's see. No, uh, it, it's a week later, a week at the, a week, you have um, a week after class closes. Like if class closes on that Sunday, you have until the, until the following Friday to finish your essay. Okay. And, while, and while I'm saying that, while I'm, you know, we're talking about that, I am, um, I am uh, fine if you send me drafts. Uh, I, I would encourage you to send me drafts of your matrix and your essay as you're writing it, if you have any questions. But that's one of the things that's important for me to do is to keep directing you and clarifying. So if you have a question about a study, let's talk about that study. If you have a question about um, um, uh, the number, uh, say something that's still, I can't figure out in my writing, it's too much. How do I shorten it? That's something that I can, I'm a, I'm a good shortener, good editor. 
I can help you do that. Okay, I think I have everyone here. So I'll take your, uh, you, I'll have you sorted into groups when you come back. Hopefully this is going to be a, my, my puzzle to solve. And um, we'll meet back in five minutes and then I'll go around the groups and we'll um, talk about each one of the articles for the critique, all right? Okay, so we've got five. I'll, be, I'll sort you into groups now. So we'll be back at, yeah, 4.56.